Good morning. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm Lisa Martin. We have two live sets here. We've got over 100 guests on the program this week with our live sets, our remote sets, talking about the next decade in cloud innovation. And I'm pleased to be welcoming back one of our CUBE alumni, Tomer Shiran, the founder and CPO of Dremio, to the program. Tomer's going to be talking about why 2022 is the year open data architectures surpass the data warehouse. Tomer, welcome back to the CUBE. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's great to be here at a live event in person, my goodness, sitting side by side with guests. Talk to me a little bit about, before we kind of dig into the data lake house versus the data warehouse, I want to, I want to unpack that with you. Talk to me about what's going on at Dremio. I know you guys were on the program earlier this summer, but what are some of the things going on right now in the fall of 2021? Yeah, for us it's a big year of uh, a lot of product news, a lot of new products, new innovation. Uh, company's grown a lot. We're uh, you know, probably three times bigger than we were a year ago, so a lot of, a lot of new, new folks on the team and uh, many, many new customers. That's good, always new customers, especially during the last 22 months, which have been obviously incredibly challenging. But I want to unpack this, the difference between a data lake and a data lake house. I love the idea of a lake house, by the way. But talk <laughs> to me about what the differences are, similarities, and how customers are benefiting. Sure, yeah, I think you could think of the lake house as kind of the, the, the evolution of the lake, right? So we have, we've had data lakes for a while now. The transition to the cloud made them a lot more powerful. And now a lot of new capabilities coming into the world of data lakes really make the, that whole kind of concept, that whole architecture much more powerful to the point that you really are not going to need a data warehouse anymore, right? And so it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. All the advantages that we had with you know, data lakes, the flexibility to use different processing engines, to have data in your own account, in open formats, um, all those benefits, but also the benefits that you had with warehouses, where you could do transactions and get high performance for your uh, BI workloads and, and things like that. So the lake house makes kind of both of those come together and gives you the, the benefits of both. The benefits of both. Talk to me about, from a customer lens perspective, what are some of the key benefits? And how does the customer go about from, say, they've got data warehouses, data lakes, to actually evolving to the lake house? You know, Data warehouses uh, have been around forever, right? And uh, you know, there, there's been some new innovation there as we've kind of moved to the cloud, but fundamentally, they're a very close and very proprietary architecture that gets very expensive quickly. And so, you know, with a data warehouse, you have to take your data and load it into the warehouse, right? You know, whether that's uh, you know, Teradata or Snowflake or any, any other uh, you know, database out there, that's, that's what you do, you bring the data into the engine. Um, the data lake house, is a really different architecture. It's one where you actually, you have, your, you have the data as its own tier, right? Stored in open formats, things like parquet files and, and iceberg tables. And you're basically bringing the engines to the data instead of the data to the engine. And so now all of a sudden you can start to take advantage of all this innovation that's happening on the same set of data without having to copy and move it around. So whether that's you know, Dremio for high performance uh, BI workloads and, and SQL uh, type of analysis, uh, Spark for kind of batch processing and machine learning, Flink for streaming, so lots of different technologies that you can use on the, on the same data. And the data stays in the customer's own account, right? So S3 effectively becomes you know, their new data warehouse, if you will. Okay, so I can imagine during the last 22 months of this scattered work from, and we're still in this work from anywhere environment with so much data being generated at the edge, the edge expanding, that bringing the engines to the data is probably now more timely than ever? Yeah, I think the, the growth in data, um, you see it everywhere, right? That, that's the reason so many companies like ourselves are, are you know, doing so well, right? It's, it's, there's so much new data, so many new use cases, and every company wants to be data driven, right? They all want to be, you know, to, to democratize data within the organization, um, uh, you know, but you need the platforms to be able to do that, right? And so uh, that's very hard if you have to constantly move data around. If you have to take your data, you know, which maybe is landing in S3, but move it into you know, subsets of it into a data warehouse, and then from there move you know, subsets of that into you know, BI extracts, right? Tableau extracts, Power BI imports, and you have to create cubes and lots of copies within the data warehouse there's no way you're going to be uh, able to provide self-service and data democratization. And so, it really requires a new architecture, um, and that's one of the main things that we've been focused on at Dremio, um, is really taking the, the, the lake house and the lake and making it not just something that data scientists use for you know, really kind of advanced use cases, but even your production BI workloads can actually now run on the lake house when you're using a, a SQL technology like Dremio. And that's really critical because as you talked about this, you know, companies, every company these days is a data company. If they're not, they have to be, or there's a competitor in the rear view mirror that is going to be able to, to take 
over what they're doing. So this really is really critical, especially considering another thing that we learned in the last 22 months is that there's no real-time data access is no longer a nice to have. It's really an essential for businesses in any organization. Yeah, I think you know we we see it even in our own company, right? The the folks that are joining the the workforce now, they they learn SQL in school, right? They 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 don't want to report on their desk printed out every Monday morning. They want access to the database. How do I connect my whatever tool I want or even type SQL by hand? And I want access to the data and I want to just use it, right? And I want the performance of course to be fast because otherwise I'll get frustrated and and I won't use it, which has been the status quo for a long time. Um, and, and that's basically what we're solving. So is the Lakehouse in, versus the data warehouse better able to really facilitate data democratization across an organization? Yeah, because there's a big, you know, people don't talk a lot about the, the story before the story, right? With, with a data warehouse, the data never starts there, right? You typically first have your data in something like an S3 or perhaps in other databases, right? And then you have to kind of ETL it all into um, into that warehouse. And that's a lot of work and typically only a small subset of the data gets ETL'd into that. Uh, data warehouse, and then the user wants to query something that's not in the warehouse, and somebody has to go from engineering spend you know a month or two months, you know, responding to that ticket and wiring up some new ETL uh, to get the data in, and so it's a big problem, right? And so if you can have a system that you know can query the data directly in S3 and even join it with sources uh, outside of that, things like your Oracle database, your your SQL Server database, your you know MongoDB, etc., well now you can really have the ability to expose data to your to your users within the company and make it very self-service. They can they can query any data at any time and get a fast response time. That, that's that's what they need. That self-service is key there. Speaking of self-service and things that are new, I know you guys, Dremio Cloud, launched that recently new SaaS offering. Talk to me about that, what's going on there. Yeah, we launched Dremio Cloud. We, we spent about two years um, working on that internally and uh, really the goal was to simplify how we deliver all of the kind of the benefits that we've had in, in our product, right? Sub-second response times uh, on the lake, a semantic layer, the ability to connect to multiple sources, but take away the pain of having to, you know, install and manage software, right? And so we did it in a way that the user doesn't have to think about versions, they don't have to think about upgrades, they don't have to monitor anything. It's basically like running and using Gmail, right? You, you log in, you, you get to use it, right? You don't have to be very sophisticated, there's no not a lot of administration you have to do. Um, it basically makes it a lot, a lot simpler. And what's the adoption been like so far? It's been great. It's been limited availability, but we've been onboarding customers uh, every week now. Um, many startups, many uh, of the world's largest companies. So uh, that's been that's been really exciting, actually. So quite a range of customers. And one of the things it sounds like Dramio has grown itself during the pandemic. We've seen acceleration of, of that, of, of uh, startups, of a lot of companies, of cloud adoption, of migration. What are some? How have your customer conversations changed in the last 22 months as businesses in every industry kind of scrambled in? the beginning to, to survive and now are realizing that they need to modernize to thrive and to be you know and to have competitive advantage. Yeah, I think I've seen a few different trends here. One is certainly there's been a lot of uh, acceleration of movement to the cloud, right? With uh, uh, you know how different businesses have been impacted, it's uh, required them to be more agile, more elastic, right? They don't necessarily know how much workload they're going to have at any point in time, so having that flexibility both in terms of the technology that can you know, with Dremio Cloud, we, we scale, for example, infinitely. Like you can have, you know, one query a day or you can have a thousand queries a second and the system just takes care of it, right? And so that's really important to these companies that are going through, you know, being impacted in, in various different ways, right? You had companies, you know, the Peloton and Zooms of the world that were, you know, business was exploding. And then of course, you know, the travel and hospitality industries and that went to zero all of a sudden. It's been recovering nicely, uh, you know, since then. But so that flexibility um, has been really important uh, to customers. Uh, I think the other thing is just they've realized that they have to leverage data, right? Because in parallel to this pandemic has been also really a boom in technology, right? And so every industry is being disrupted by you know, new startups, whether it's the insurance industry, the financial services, a lot of insure tech, fintech, you know, different uh, companies that are trying to take advantage of data. So if you as, a, as an enterprise are not doing that, you know, that, that's a problem, right? It is a problem. It's definitely something that I think every, business in every industry needs to be very acutely aware of because from a competitive advantage perspective, you know there's someone in that rearview mirror who is going to be focused on data, have a real solid modern data strategy that's going to be able to take over if a company is resting on its laurels at all. So here we are at reInvent, they talked a lot about um, 
I just came off the, uh, Adam Silipsy's keynote, but talk to me about the Drumeo AWS partnership. I know AWS, its partner ecosystem is huge. You're one of the partners, but talk to me about what's going on with the partnership. How long have you guys been partners? What are the advantages for your customers? You know, we've been very close uh, partners with AWS for, for a number of years now, and it kind of spans many different parts of AWS, from kind of the, uh, the engineering organization, so very close relationship with you know, the S3 team, the EC2 team. Uh, you know, I was just having dinner last night with uh, Kevin Miller, the GM of, of S3. Um, and so that's kind of one side of things, is really the engineering integration. You know, we're the, the first technology to integrate with AWS Lake Formation, which is Amazon's data lake security technology. So we, we do a lot of work together on kind of upcoming features that Amazon is releasing. Um, and then also they've been really helpful on the go-to-market side of things, on the sales and, and marketing, um, whether it's you know, blogs on the Amazon blog or their sales teams actually promoting Dremio to their customers um, uh, to help them be successful. So it's really been a good, good partnership. And they're, they are, every time I talk to somebody from Amazon, we always talk about their kind of customer first focus, their customer obsession. Sounds like you're, uh, there's deep alignment on, from the technical engineering perspective, sales and marketing. Talk to me a little bit about cultural alignment, because when you're going into customer conversations, I imagine they want to see one unified team. Yeah, you know, I think Amazon does have that customer first, and, and obviously we do as well, and we, you know, we have to, right? As a, as a startup for us, you know, if a customer has a problem, the whole company will jump on that problem, right? So that's where we call it customer obsession internally. Um, and, and I think that's very much what we've seen, you know, with, with AWS as well, is the desire to make the customer successful comes before, okay, how does this affect a specific Amazon product, right? Because anytime a customer is, uh, uh, you know, using Dremio on AWS, they're also consuming many different AWS services and they're bringing data into AWS. And so um, I, I think for both of us, it, it's all about how do we solve customer problems and make them successful with their data in this case. Yep, solving those customer problems is the whole reason that we're all here, right? Talk to me a little bit about um, as we have just a few more minutes here, we, when we hear terms like future-proof, I always want to dig in with, with folks like yourself, chief product officers, what does it actually mean? How do you enable businesses to create these future-proof data architectures that are going to allow them to scale and be really competitive? Sure, so yeah, I think many companies have been, have experienced what's known as lock-in, right? They, they invest in some technology, you know, we've seen this with you know, databases and, and data warehouses, right? You, you start using that and you can really never get off and prices go up and you find out that you're spending 10 times more, especially now with cloud data warehouses, 10 times more than you thought you were going to be spending. And at that point it becomes very difficult, right? What do you do? And so um, one of the great things about the, the data lake and the lake house architecture is that the data stays stored in the customer's own account, right? It's in their S3 buckets in open source formats like Parquet files and iceberg tables. Um, and they can use many different technologies on that. So, you know, today the best technology for, for you know, SQL and, you know, powering your, your mission critical BI is, is Dremio, but tomorrow there may be something else, right? And that customer can then take that, uh, uh, that company can take that new technology, point at the same data and start using it, right? that they don't have to go through some really crazy migration process. And you know, we, we see that with you know, Teradata and Oracle, right? The, the, the old school vendors, yes. um, that's always been a pain. And now it is with the, with the newer uh, cloud data warehouses, you see a lot of complaints around that. So the, the lake house is fundamentally designed, especially if you choose open source formats like uh, iceberg tables, as opposed to say uh, you know, Delta Lake, you're, you're really you know, future proofing yourself, right? Um, Got it. Talk to me about some of the things as we wrap up here that, that attendees can learn and see and touch and feel and smell at the Jumio booth at this reInvent. Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's a few different things. They can, uh, they can watch, a, watch a demo or play around with the Dremio Cloud. And they can talk to our team about uh, what we're doing with Apache Iceberg. It's, uh, uh, Iceberg to me is one of the more exciting projects uh, in this space because you know, it's created by Netflix and Apple Salesforce, AWS just announced support for Iceberg with, uh, with their products, Athena and EMR. So it's really kind of emerging as the standard table format, the way to represent data in open formats in, in S3. Uh, we've been behind Iceberg now for, for a while, and so that to us is very exciting. We're happy to chat with folks at the booth about that. Um, Nessie is another project that we created, an open source project for uh, really providing a Git-like experience for your data, where you have version control and branching and kind of trying to reinvent uh, data engineering and data management. So that's another you know, cool project that uh, uh, we can talk about at the booth. 
Awesome, so lots of opportunity there for attendees to learn even more. Thank you, Toma, for joining me on the program today, talking about the difference between a data warehouse, data lake, the lake house. You did a great job explaining that. Dremio Cloud, what's going on, and how you guys are deepening that partnership with AWS. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, thanks for having me. My pleasure. For Tomer Shiran, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. Our coverage of AWS reInvent continues after this.